Good morning. Monday here. And today, as it's Monday, is Makeover Monday. I've got my, my microphone on and I welcome you all to the live studio today. Um, for Makeover Monday, we are going to... Hi, Tracy, you're the first one here. Surprising. We're working on Tracy's painting. Um, hi, Meg. So um, before I talk about that, I'll uh, just wait till some more people pop in so that we can um, address the, the painting issues. Just because um, it takes a little bit of time before everybody gets uh, on and morning Judy. And so I'll talk a little bit about um, Friday's class. So initially I had said I wouldn't do any more workshops for May. Um, or they would just be whatever's and I've decided that this morning I decided that I would just keep the ball rolling and we'll keep doing workshops on Fridays So I'll talk about this again a little later to keep everybody in the loop, but I've made another option so you can now um, Hi Roxanne. Hi Tessa. You can now buy um, For the rest of the month. Okay, so every month what I'll do is I'll have my workshops posted. Today I didn't get an opportunity to list what the whole month was going to be, but going forward I will be listing what all the workshops will be. Um, and then that way you can buy them as a package instead of one-offs. And it'll be much easier. Um, hi Sophie. It'll be much easier in the long run if uh, you are attending regularly on Friday to buy one time instead of buying every single week. So um, yeah, so that's a little bit of news and then so you'll go to the same link. I just posted it. Um, you'll go to the same link that you always go to which is my website. Hi Emmy. And um, from that it will show you where the new workshop is. So the new workshop is called um, I'm going to wait until Amelia comes on before I make that big announcement. But <laughs> anyway, the new workshop's called Let Loose um, for this Friday. And I hope you all can join because I think it's going to be really, really fun. Um, something a little different from last Friday's, which is more tedious, more focus, more skill set. Um, don't worry about it, Tracy. I printed off what I had, so it's all good. Um, it wasn't you, it was me. My uh, printer is slowly running out of ink so we just have to deal with what it is until my ink arrives um, anyway so yeah so Friday's class um, I've decided to continue with the classes so for the rest of Friday you can or sorry for the rest of the workshops for May which there are three Fridays left in May you can buy them all as a package and um, so that you don't have to pay individually each time and after trying every platform I think known to men right now I've decided to go ahead with um, Facebook live because it is easiest um, that's my first reason and I just like how I interact with you guys on Facebook it just seems to be a bit more I don't know less webinar and more friendly and more tribe like so I'm going to be doing that on Fridays and um, you'll be invited when you do uh, buy them, even if you buy one at a time or whether you buy the whole package, you'll automatically be invited to a Facebook group by the same name as the class. So it'll be easy to find later whenever you wanna go back to it. So this Friday is called Let Loose. And so you'll be, when you buy that workshop, you'll be in the Let Loose group. And then within that let loose group, you'll always have access to that video. So no fumbling for links and passwords and everything else, which is just beyond, beyond, beyond frustrating as the administrator. Um, so I'm going to drop all that. We're just going to make it go back to simple because that's how I started all this was super simple. It was just getting, yes, you can still buy them separately. No worries. Um, but don't forget, even if you do buy it and you can't attend um, that workshop you will forever have access to that group so if you buy a workshop and can't attend that Friday then you'll still be within that group and you'll be able to go back and watch that video as many times as you want and see everybody's posts and everything else so um, I think for now 
Um, Facebook has just announced that they're actually coming up with a, uh, a business model based on Zoom. So it's very interesting because they've caught on to this live video, monetizing it, blah, 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 allowing more than 50 viewers to watch, all that other kind of stuff. So this is what I'll be doing for now until Facebook announces or not announces the date or the launch of that and then we'll be moving to that platform so it's still within Facebook but it should be much easier because they're realizing that not everybody which is the the issue right now is that there's so many workarounds for people who are not hosting webinars right now everything the world is centric on hosting your what would normally be in-person meetings um, you know in a in a digital format um, webinar format so that people can converse and continue on working. Um, it just there's a lot of workarounds for people like us who are trying to be more in the the makers. I always call it the cooking demonstration, right? So we're always looking more at the 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 paper, at the project, at the process than we are necessarily at looking at me talking to you. So um, and then it's not that I don't value and love your feedback. It's just that when I'm in the flow of teaching, I've been teaching such a long time, I can almost anticipate the questions that are gonna come, which is why I offer so much dialogue as I'm teaching. So, hi Margo. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's a little bit about the classes. So I'll come back to that at the end for anybody just tuning in. But you'll notice within our group, um, there we go. So I've noticed uh, within our group, I've been I've been adding the um, the link to the new classes and I just got that one on this morning so you'll see it it's called let loose and I haven't seen Amelia in the feed yet today but um, I just have to say thank you to Amelia and I will again later if she pops on because I just wanted to say she totally inspired this Friday's workshop um, but more on that later okay so let's talk about Tracy's painting today is makeover Monday and that's why you're here hi Susan um, so I can't remember who it was last week, but somebody has suggested that maybe Thursday is, um, should be about, what was it? Not technique, but, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, um, no matter, but somebody wanted more um, like art theory, theory Thursday, that was it. Somebody wanted more theory on Thursday. And I said, I'm not the person to teach in the store as my good friend Pam says, we don't sell that in this shop. So unfortunately, I'm not formally trained, so I'm not the best one to offer my opinion on that. However, um, today's Makeover Monday brings into account a lot of theory. So it's interesting because you'll get my theory on theory um, within today's workshop and we'll be addressing Tracy's painting at the same time. So Makeover Mondays is not to put anybody on the, in the hot seat. Um, that's not the point at all. The point is I am choosing projects that people are having issues with based on what I see commonly occurring as an issue. Like if more people say, this is the problem I have, this is the problem I have, then those are the issues I need to address, right? So, um, so I have Tracy's painting here and I printed it out. You can see my, uh, it, it's got this funky little thing going on down here because my printer is uh, running out of ink. So it actually looks cool. Um, but you have to imagine that in Tracy's painting, she's got the same thing going on up here that she does down here. So without further ado, I'm gonna tilt the camera down and I'm going to start talking. Here we go. Let me get cords and cameras and microphones and everything out of the way so that we can see what's going on. I have my phone charged because I noticed that was an issue the other day. All right. Okay. So let's see what you guys are seeing. Okay. Got it. So unfortunately, I'll tilt it back up uh, because I won't be able to take questions for a few moments. But I'm also going to bring up Tracy's painting on my laptop. And then every once in a while, I'll refer um, back to that with a little pointer so that you can actually see the real colors as opposed to what's going on in... Um, in this. So let me cancel that. Let me bring this up full screen and then we'll get to 
we'll get to that. Sorry, I'm talking to myself because I'm trying to make Tracy's painting full screen. Um, one sec, preview. Yeah, I do a lot of talking to myself. There we go. Okay. So, oops. All right. Fun little interlude there where I just got all quiet. Um, I'm trying to just make it so that it fits on the screen because my computer has since enlarged it for us to the point where we can't see the whole thing. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, minimize. That's what that little minus is for. Okay. There, got it. Okay, so um, for now, let me just take this off. And we'll talk about Tracy's painting. There we go. Okay, so. All right, so. Uh, what are we looking at here? My screen, finally. Okay, so this is Tracy's actual painting as opposed to the photocopy that I have. Um, the photocopy that I have, like I said, my ink is running out, so we're gonna talk about this first before I start looking at it. But we talked last week a lot about value and we talked about composition usually being the first thing that we looked at. So if anybody remembers back to last week, the one thing that I always look at first when I'm analyzing any kind of a painting is um, the greatest area of high and low contrast, okay? So that means where your eye is gonna go first and then does it travel from there? So clearly this image is so detailed and so clear and it's black and white and that beigey color that that is the area where our eye goes first, okay? So because this is the area where our eye goes first, this is Tracy's focal point, whether she wants people to look at it or not. Now, what you guys can see is that she has tried a couple of techniques. So she's tried to bring in some dark, some, there's a little bit of black and white you'll see in the bottom and then some gray and then some mid-tones. She's tried to bring those colors to the top and the bottom so that your eye, which starts here, will travel through the painting. But Tracy tried a technique last Tuesday where we talked about photo integration, right? And in photo integration, the issue we have was that we were, we were painting around the border, okay? So Tracy's done everything right. She's been listening to her lessons and she's been following everything out. And now I'm gonna teach you the exception or one of the exceptions to the rule because this comes up so often. So the main glaring issue is that because this image is the highest um, uh, area of high and low value, right? That's where our eye goes. We have now this dark border around, which is the, the integration part that she tried. But what she's done is she's actually isolated it completely and made your eye only look at this. So, and then you can see she's taken this picture straight on because there's actually in here, you can see her carpet is on the other side of it. And the painting blends better into the carpet than it does into that, ish, into that um, image. Okay, so how do we rectify that? So, you know, she did exactly what I said and it didn't work. So here's an exception to the rule. So within this area, within this image of high and low concentration, um, we have a defining shape. So Tracy thought that the page, the whole page was the shape, but that's wrong. That whole page is not the shape. This is the shape. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the Flatiron Building in New York City. And it is not only iconic, but it is totally the shape of this painting. And you'll happen to notice that the texture and the color of this shape, very ironically, is the same color and texture as her carpet. So, 
there's actually a relationship between the carpet and the picture, which is the only thing that's actually keeping you looking and bouncing a little bit off this page. But her painting is not going to be displayed, I imagine, on the floor. So what she needs to do is make sure that this painting is going to hold up and this image is going to hold up on its own. But the mistake she made, and a very common mistake, was determining that the rectangle or the square that she put on here was actually the shape. It's not. This is the shape. So in order to integrate, we have two ways, if anybody remembers back, we have two ways of integrating that image. One is to cut this out, bum, 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 around, 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 eliminating then any half buildings and things that aren't making any sense, right? So she could have totally done one of two things. First one, cut that out and then paste that onto her background, in which case then she would have easily been able to integrate this image and not have this big area of blank doing nothing. Second thing she could have done is just painted it, or pasted it, sorry, as is, like we did in our Technique Tuesday last week, and um, she could have painted right up to it, right, by integrating and ignoring that background. So by her making this um, background part of the image she has completely isolated your eye to that very rectangle and we look at nothing else okay so now let's go down to what she can do to fix that I hope that's clear um, and I hope she's having a dope moment right now because that's all it is is that she took my words literally that you want to integrate the image from the outside but the first thing she would have had to do was actually isolate that so in this case shape is also determining the um, composition of this painting as well as value, okay? So the greatest area of high and low value is still here, but she has made this shape the greatest area of high and low value. So now this is the only thing we look at. So um, let me flip this over now to the painting and let's start working on it. So I'm going to turn that around so you don't have to see my messy studio. And I'll plunk the camera back in my device. Get the cord out of the way. Sorry guys, I'm seasick again. Okay, uh, come on and help me with this. I should just see if Siri could just fix the painting. Fix the painting for us, Siri. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to use a black graphite pencil so that we can talk about the shape and the value and that sort of thing. So I don't want to write on here because I want to, you to be able to see what's actually happening instead of my, uh, or, uh, my fixes rather than what's really going on. So what Tracy has done in her real image is she's created this shape and that's what we're looking at, right? We're not really looking at anything else. Because my printer is out of ink, it's actually muted things quite um, quite a lot, but what you should know is that, actually, and I'll just do it with paint to illustrate that quite um, quickly, what we should recognize is that this is what's going on in this image because this is the darkest. Anyway, so like I said, this is not meant to put anybody in the hot spot. It's just meant to actually make everyone aware of very common painting issues. Like these are things that I see all the time in classes and that's why it's, there we go. And that's why it's important to address them um, when they come up. So if you do have a painting that um, you're stuck with or whatever, you can send it to me, like post it within the group and um, with an open studio with Christina, make sure you don't go into any other page, but open studio with Christina, and then put it up as a candidate. And then if I see that it's something that um, will benefit lots of people, then we will definitely um, address it together, okay? So now I'm just going to give you a few more details in here so we can see how dark and how much contrast we actually have going on in here. There. 
Okay, so now our value is a little bit more accurately represented to what's going on. So you can see up in the top, Tracy's tried to put some stamps in. She's tried to add some different value. Down here, she put some mustard yellow in. She was trying different things, like everything we've been working on, but it just wasn't working. So finally, when she said, I'm totally frustrated, what's going on? This is what we need to eliminate. And just watch what happens when I eliminate that. Um, with a bit of paint. So I'm going to grab something that I have that is on my palette that will be closest to um, the colors she already has. So I'm going to choose a little mixture of something and I'm going to paint it out. Now Tracy's got some interesting background stuff going on so I won't be able to do anything about that. So just um, I'm not suggesting she paint over the whole thing but she might lose a lot in the integration because what we actually need her to do was to is to visually cut out the parts that are distracting okay so let's cut that out cut 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 now that weird shape building she could totally eliminate that if she wanted to and then she has a gray down here but we'll add that back in afterwards once we integrate because we just need to isolate the image as though she had cut it out in the first place so Are we seeing the magic here already? The shape, which was before being determined by the integration of the dark outline that I had taught you in last Monday's class, and now with an exception, is being clearly sort of trumped in the, the nature of... Um, of exceptions to the rule. So this is by far an exception to the rule because she used the outside of the paper to determine the shape and it created a very strong shape. Now when she goes back in, because now in mine unfortunately it didn't print that color so I'm just going to show you she actually has some color down here. She has a gray which comes almost all the way up so I'll put that back in. And then she has some mustard yellow, which again, my poor printer didn't want to do. And then up here, it's much darker. So I'll put that back in. There. So now you guys can see, right? You can clearly see that without those lines there, there's a new shape in town, right? And this new shape in town is being completely dictated by this shape and by the value. So our eye definitely still starts and stops here but this is definitely helping so she was on the right track she had all the right things going on because now she just wants to pick up on some colors and some other values but there's a few little tricks that she could keep in mind at this point which might help so um, collage is always one element that i always bounce to because it really helps move your eye around and it's non-committal so meaning that if I use collage in a with just water in a painting, so on paper it's a little more detrimental, but on um, within your paintings, I use collage a lot because it is really non-committal in that if I spray some paper with water and stick it down, I'm able to get a really good representation of what it's going to look like within the painting. So I'm actually going to put a bit of dark here and a bit of dark here. And I'll show you the reasons for that in one sec. And I'm doing it, this is a napkin that just happens to have like a little leaf pattern on it. There we go. Okay, so you see how with water, like the tissue part just totally disappears. And now I'm gonna make sure you guys can still see me. Yes, you can. So now you can see that these lines have now added the same value as the black and they've moved us through. But one reason I chose those lines as opposed to, let's say, 
um, I don't have anything nearby, but what I wanted to point out was as opposed to like straight lines. So on the bottom, she had those little black and white lines. The reason why I chose non-black and white, or sorry, non-straight uh, lines is because, and these curved lines, is because we have some very strong, very strong up and down lines going on. And because the shape of this building is carrying the perspective off the page, I'm going to illustrate that with my maybe I'll use it with white and maybe you can see it a little bit better. So I'm just using a piece of wood that I found here as a straight edge. But this is the shape that we have going on in this painting. Right? We have two vertical lines which eventually way off the page somewhere will meet because it's wider here than here but nevertheless they're still vertical lines and then she's I'm following the buildings I'm following the contours of the buildings and I'm giving you the lines that are created within this painting Do you see how straight they are in order to break up all the straight lines that we are creating so even if I hadn't drawn them in they still exist by the virtue of what's been created. So by adding these little doohickeys here that are on a, uh, my technical term, doohickeys, by adding the doohickeys that have branch and curve and line, what we're doing is we're actually going to be creating um, a different, a diversion away from, from this, this uh, all these lines so I'm going to continue this pattern a little bit with some black paint because I could add more napkin but I'm just going to, to extend what's there and create a bit more of the same I forgot that I haven't even collaged that piece in yet it's just water which is why it's bleeding but that's okay so I'm just extending that. I'm going to do the same with this one. Extend it a little bit. And now my eye is effortlessly moving across these rigid barriers that have been created by all these straight lines, both vertical and horizontal. We don't realize just how powerful our scissor cuts are, um, how how precise and how influential every single mark we make within our work is. Is it loose? Is it tight? Is it all linear lines? Is it constricted? Is it, are we just full of the same thing? We have these things that I call your isms and it's the things that we continuously do in our paintings and make no mistake, your isms are not all strokes of brilliance. I'm laughing to myself because that is a very harsh thing to have just said. However, I fall under the same category. I do a lot of things that are not brilliant, okay? I've just learned to recognize what I do consistently that is creating something that is um, uh, like a, a, a discord within my own work. It's something that I don't like. It's something that I go, I don't know, there's something about it. And it's funny because it happens every single time. And then sometimes I fail to see it. I've just gotten better at recognizing, oh, I do that a lot. So it's those things that you recognize that you do a lot that you learn to recognize and then learn, okay, so what is my workaround for that? Because there is a workaround. Trust me, trust me, trust me. So um, you just have to figure out what it is. And so I haven't seen enough of Tracy's work because she's brand new at this um, to know what her regular isms are going to be, but she'll recognize them and develop them over time. And if she, she now sees the issue, this may never come up again. She may never cut the outside of the image um, thinking that that was the complete image to be had. So now I want to show you, let's fight against that current of, of um, vertical lines and horizontal, horizontal, 
horizontal straight lines even more. And here I'm going to tear a tissue paper. This is actually a napkin that's down to its last level. And it's got some interesting um, colors in it. But more interesting than the colors is the shape. So we don't have any circles in here. It's not that every painting needs circles. It's just that if you remember back way back when to one of those paintings I did where I had a lot of lines, right? I had outlined my picture and I had lots of square and straight and straight and vertical and horizontal lines, lots of straight lines. And then the way I ended up combating all that, um, the straight line issue was to get in there and paint some big old fat uh, orange circles in there. Actually, in, in that one, it was a masked circle so that you could still see what was going on in the background and I painted everything else orange. Um, but what it really did, there, I've got that torn out. My kingdom for a pair of scissors. Um, so, sorry, I have no scissors on my thing. So with napkin, it doesn't really matter so much um, because the edges will disappear. But because I don't have scissors here, maybe it's meant to be torn. Anyway, bear with me as I just tear my way through this painstakingly. But anyway, so what we're doing, what we are attempting to do here is to change that strong, strong background we have going on of, um, or, or structure we have going on with all these lines. So we're going to put that one in there. We're going to make it disappear with a little water so that you guys can see it. Okay, wrap that around there, make that wrap around there, so now it disappears. Okay, so now, do you see what we have going on? Now, with these black lines, and then with these circles, we've completely changed all these lines. And it's not that they've been removed, the lines are still there for you to see them, but now every little detail thing that she wants to do, like maybe she decides she wants it, because you saw she had a stamp down here of a star, now she could do as many stamps as she wants of stars all the way along her painting. And it's not going to take away at all from what's going on because this is now, she was trying to rescue it before, but we just needed to get the structure or the um, composition balanced, right? So this is not at all uncommon. This is completely common issue and it's just recognizing that within the images that we add, we have to determine what the shape is. So uh, like I said, it's just an exception to the rule and I'm going to flip this up now so I can see if there's any questions. Okay, so let me go back. Um, I don't know why the video is interrupted. I hope you guys are back. Um, okay, probably didn't miss anything anyway. Um, so Tracy says that she's learning so much. She lacked background before setting in my image and it's a canvas panel, so not a scratch. Um, yes, not scratchable, but you see it's not in the scratching. This is totally always comes back to a composition issue. There are always composition issues like I, I can't even tell you how many times like people, students have asked me, you know, like, can you help me figure out what's wrong with my painting? And it always comes down to, let's look at your composition. And that's all it is. So, um, wow, we have no questions. <laughs> this is great. Anyway, um, so I don't know why the video was interrupted. I should have, um, if that ever happens again, somebody who is on my phone just give me shoot me a little text and then i'll just slow down or something we'll figure that out anyway so um yeah so you can see i'm going to hold this up against white so that it it shows up a little bit better um so you can see that what we did to sort of rescue this painting was identify where the issues are right so the issues was that her her integration made this building and that whole image 
the only thing we looked at, right? So by eliminating all of the background and unifying it, which is easiest done if she just cut out the buildings in the first place and placed it on a background, then we can avoid trying to integrate stuff that's not important because really the only thing that you actually see in this is that flat iron building and what's behind it. So getting your eye to move through the rest of the painting was as simple as identifying how the lines are, identifying the composition of the painting, and then giving a little variety to the line and the shape. And that's it. Like it's really so simple. Once you can master identifying the, the issues that you come across time and time again in your own work, and like I said, I illustrate this, these one painting at a time, not because I want to put anybody in the hot seat. I just really am trying to show you common issues and hopefully within today's lesson and every Monday's lessons, you'll see things that you'll rec it'll help you recognize what you do within your work that might help you overcome your issues because that's all we really need to do is, right? We only need to be able to fix our own work. So um, I hope you guys found this useful. I don't know that I've been on for a full hour today. No, I haven't, short day. Anyway, um, moving forward, I don't have anything picked out for next Monday. So should anybody want to um, pop in some, in the comments, some of your uh, trouble paintings, um, I'll pick one, like I said, each week that I find is a common issue, okay? so. Oh, you know what? I'm going to try and bring these two up side by side. Give me one second. See if my computer will spring to life. There we go. Whoops. My paper's a little limp. Okay, so let's make that. Okay, so let me take this off. I'll try not to touch anything. Maybe I just kind of... All right, there we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this was the before, right? Before, and this is the after. So, they're two different sizes. That's not gonna help. But if you can see, if I hold it back, you can see the issue has been resolved in that before our eye just went completely to the outline of the shape of that building. And then now we, we took it away and we placed the emphasis only on what um, Tracy had intended you to look at, which was that building. Okay. So um, moving forward, we were talking about workshops earlier and I have decided to move to on Facebook. Um, tried Zoom, tried Loom, tried, what have I tried? I think I've tried everything. I tried Vimeo, I've tried them all. And everybody seems to be have so much issues with accessing videos later and trying to keep it private and trying to this and trying to that. And so I hope you guys all um, we'll just bear with me here, but I'm going to just proceed on through um, Facebook and we'll just carry on, carry on. So it'll be live every Friday, um, doing one month at a time. I'll tell you how many Fridays in every month. You'll know ahead of time which workshops. You can pay for all of them in one lump sum rather than having to do it individually. You can also choose individual should you like. And for May, there's only three Fridays left, so I've lumped them together on my website, so you can either choose just the Fridays class or the next three. Um, since I just had this stroke of brilliance this morning, I haven't had time to plan the next Friday's workshops, but moving forward, I'll have everything announced so that you'll know which ones. But the um, private Facebook group will be the same name as the workshop. So this Friday's workshop will be called Let Loose. And so the uh, private Facebook group will be called Let Loose and then hyphen open studio with Christina. And that way when you have, when you get that class, you have access to that group, which is only that video and information pertaining to that group indefinitely, right? So 
Um, so it doesn't matter if you can't participate live, you can always do it whenever you want. You'll be able to access it whenever you want and it'll be easy to find it because it'll be the same name as the workshop. Okay. So I hope that solves a lot of issues for a lot of us. And, um, what I'll do is I'll also be running my uh, laptop simultaneously. So that that way, um, I can actually see if we lose the feed or something. And so that way I can always just bring us back and make sure everybody's back and that sort of thing. But always, like I said, the good thing is that you can always go back and you can watch the rest later. So um, we had some issues the first time with doing it in two parts um, because Facebook only allows you to do 90 minute lives. So that's the only um, restriction we have is that we'll do, um, we'll do, our workshop quickly within the hour and a half and then the second part if you do choose to come back on we'll be answering any questions and that sort of thing okay so that part will sort of be an addendum to the workshop so I'll always make sure that the workshop is contained within the 90 minutes and then the second part will be the additional information or question answering or um, that's even when I can bring people on and you can ask questions you can show me your work that sort of thing because now we have that option to share the button um, so we're going to do that for the second part, which will be the additional 30 minutes. Okay. So it is a pleasure as always to have been here for you. And I hope you learned something from today's workshop. Tomorrow is Technique Tuesday and I haven't actually even thought about what technique. And I'm sure once I ask the powers that be, they will tell me exactly what it is we're doing tomorrow because I right now don't know. But um, last week photo integration was great. And you can see from today's project that a lot of people, um, uh, have really started to work on these and really integrate some of these techniques and make them your own, which is really, truly a blessing to me is to watch people um, incorporating the skill set that I'm passing on to you and totally running with it and making it your thing. And not everything that I do is going to be your thing. So, but what you take from it and what you translate into the currents of you is going to be your art, right? So that's going to speak for you. So with that, mwah. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow at noon for Technique Tuesday on Open Studio with Christina.